friends today we are going to study the concept of non linear pipeline process for which we have to learn the reservation and the latency analysis so questions from this area are being asked often so you might be given the diagram the stage the, the stage diagram may be given to you from that stage diagram you have to find the reservation table from the reservation table you have to find the collision vector and from the collision vector so so to find the collision vector you have to first find the forbidden latency the permissible latency from this to you are getting the collision vector and from the collision vector you have to find the state diagram from the state diagram you have to find the uh, simple cycles greedy cycle and the minimum average latency first of all let us take an example for solving this kind of problems so first of all we are taking a three stage pipeline process diagram so this is a three stage pipeline process diagram these are s1 s2 and s3 stages so this is the input over here okay now it goes to this this is one output which is called output x this is out another output which is output y okay this is the three stage pipeline process process diagram so from this diagram we have to find the corresponding reservation table there would be two reservation table reservation table for output x and the reservation table for output y so let us consider the reservation table for output x output x okay so there are three stages s1 stage s2 stage and s3 stage it would take 8 clock cycles to perform this task okay. 6 7 and 8 okay these are the clock cycles clock cycle 1 clock cycle 2 clock cycle 3 clock cycle 4 5 6 7 and 8 and these are the corresponding stages okay so now we are considering this example this diagram and from this diagram we would fill the reservation table so first task is being performed at s1 stage in time t1 so first task is being performed then from s1 it goes to s2 in time t2 and from s2 it goes to s3 in time t3 now there are two paths this one from s2 to from s3 to s2 path and from s3 to s1 path s3 to s1 path so we have to choose between these two that which path we would take whether we would take this path or whether we have to take this path we have to choose it so suppose we are taking this path from s3 to s1 if we choose a path from s3 to s1 from that output is attained in the next stage only which means if we choose from s3 to s1 we are putting in clock cycle 4 we are putting uh, the tax in s1 okay then the tax is being performed and the rest of the reservation table is not utilized 
so this is not the thing we have to utilize all the eight clock cycles okay so we are taking s3 now you can say that okay we uh, we are taking s3 to s2 now you can also say that why we can take from s3 to s1 and from s1 s1 we can go to again s2 or we can go to s1 to s3 but if we choose from s1 to s3 we have to exceed the clock cycles we need more clock cycles in a within eight clock cycle the tax will not be performed okay so we are taking from s3 we are taking it to s2 so again in s2 and when it when it is in s2 it is again going to s3 when it is in s3 we have again two paths s3 to s1 and s3 to s2 if we choose s3 to a s2 we would require more clock cycles so we are discarding this path and we are taking this path s3 to s1 so s3 to s1 this thing and from s1 we are also having two paths we can go from we, we are having three paths we can cross we can get the corresponding output but uh, the left the rest will be unused the rest will be unused so we are and if we take from s1 it goes to s2 then it will take more number of clock cycles so we are taking from s1 it goes to s3 okay from s1 it goes to s3 and from s3 we are considering from s3 we are not considering s1 to get the output in the next step only so this is the reservation table so once again i am recalling it from s1 it goes to s2 from s2 it goes to s3 from s3 there are two paths we can go from s3 to s2 from s3 to s1 we are discarding s3 to s1 because if we take s3 to s1 we are getting the output in the next step only which which means we are getting the output in this step only but we have to utilize all the all the eight stages so we are discarding this path uh, so we are choosing this path from s3 to s2 from s3 to s2 we are choosing it from s2 it goes again to s3 from s3 it it has it again has two paths s3 to s2 and s3 to s1 we are choosing s3 to s1 because if we choose s3 to s2 we need more clock cycles okay so we from s3 we are going to s1 s1 from s1 there are three paths we can go to output x but uh, we have to use all the eight cycles so we are not going to uh, output x in the next step okay so we are choosing from s s1 we are choosing to s3 so we are we have choose s3 and from s3 we are going again going to s1 so that in the next step in the last step only we are getting the output okay this is the re reservation table which i have drawn from the reservation table we have to find the forbidden latency so there is a concept which we have to learn from this reservation table only that if a work if a work or a task is initiated in stage s1 in clock cycle 1 we cannot initiate another task in time cycle 6 for the same stage s1 the same goes for 8 in simple words we would say that if we initiate a task for S1 stage in clock cycle 1, we cannot initiate another task in any other clock cycle for the same stage. Okay. So for S2, if we initiate a task for S2 in clock cycle 2, we cannot initiate another task for the same S2, for the same stage S2 in the clock cycle 4. Okay. So the same goes for S3. If we initiate a task for S3, in clock cycle 3 we cannot initiate a task for the same s3 for the same s3 stage for clock cycle in clock cycle 5 and for the same thing if we initiate a task for s3 in clock cycle 3 we cannot initiate another task in clock cycle 7 for the same stage s3 okay for which we have to find the forbidden latency what is forbidden latency so that to avoid the coalition these are the coalitions okay that in same stage we are recalling the same 
thing again and again so we have to forbid the latency so we have to for, forbid the thing to avoid the collision so now we have to find the collision vector for finding the collision vector we have to find the forbidden latency and the permissible latency so let us find the for forbidden latency so what is the forbidden latency forbidden latency is the difference between the successive tasks in the same stage so this task is being performed and this task is being performed in the same stage so we have to find out the difference between these two tasks so that we can find the forbidden latency so for stage for stage s1 the forbidden latency is r 6 minus 1 again 8 minus 1 again 8 minus 6 okay this is for stage s1 for stage s2 it would be 4 minus 2 okay for s3 it would be 5 minus 3 okay now it would be 7 minus 3 and would be 7 minus 5 so the resultant would be uh, what would be the resultant 5 this would be 7 this would be 2 this would be 2 this would be 2 this would be 4 and this would be 5 this would be 2 okay now there are four twos so we are taking only one twos and then there is five four there is five there is seven so this is the ascending order we have arranged it in ascending order now the permissible limit permissible latency you have to find the permissible latencies so to find the permissible latency we are considering the collision vector first collision vector now there is a concept that the number which is highest in the in the forbidden latency what is the number highest in the collision in the forbidden latency 7 is being highest in the forbidden latency so we would take so so for representing the collision vector we would require 7 bits to represent the collision vector so so we have to take seven bits to represent the collision vector c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 c7 so we require seven bits to represent the collision vector now the, what is permissible latency permissible latency would be the rest of the thing in here so what would be the 1 3 and 6 now you can say that why we can also take we can also include 8 over here but we require only 7 bits to represent the collision vector so we would not take 8 so this is the thing now we would write the collision vector so uh, now we have to take the forbidden latencies and this is the forbidden latency so we would straight away write One over here. One over in four. Here and one. The rest of the bits will be zero. Okay. This is the collision vector for us. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. And if you like the video, please press the like button and subscribe my channel. Thank you.